Designing art for screen printing is a creative part of the job and in many ways the most challenging. This is where you use your skills and imagination to create the design for a customer or a design of your own. The basics include creating designs, working with the millions of colors available, adding text, locating graphics on the internet, and editing graphics for the use in your design. The equipment you will need includes a computer system, including the computer monitor, keyboard, and mouse, and graphics software. There are many graphics software packages that work well for creating screen printing designs. In this video, we will use Adobe Illustrator, though similar designs could be created with other programs, such as CorelDRAW or Freehand. Graphics software can be very demanding, and newer versions may not work on older computer systems. Make sure that the system requirements match your computer. Adobe Illustrator is popular for creating artwork and has a number of features that add to its capability. We'll start by opening the program. It has a number of tools that allows you to create and edit the elements of your design. In addition, you can have literally millions of colors to choose from. We'll start with a square and demonstrate the colors. The program allows you to set the color for the fill, which is the color inside the shape, and the stroke, which is the outline of the shape. The thickness, or weight, is measured in points. A point is an old printer's term often used to describe the size of text and thickness of lines. There are 72 points to the inch. All printed colors can be produced by combining just three colors, cyan, magenta, and yellow. These are called the three subtractive primary colors. The fourth option is black. This system of color is known in the printing industry as CMYK. Printers use K for black, so it doesn't get confused with blue. Different proportions of cyan, magenta, and yellow can create all of the other colors. For example, combining cyan and magenta produce all of the shades of blue or purple. Combining magenta and yellow produce the shades of red and orange, and combining yellow and cyan produce shades of green and teal. Most computers show 128 shades of each color. This gives over 16 million color combinations. To help graphic designers select colors, programs use a Pantone system. This is a code that specifies the combination of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black in each shade so that they can be duplicated by other people. For example, if you find a shade of green that works for your design, you can specify that same Pantone color when you purchase the ink to print it. It is also important to understand the difference between a shape with a white fill and one with none. White fill covers up anything underneath, while no fill makes the shape transparent. Now let's put together a simple design for a t-shirt using some of the design elements in the program. The pencil tool is also called the freeform tool. Anywhere you click and drag, it leaves a line. Even a few simple squiggles can make an interesting design. Now we'll give them some eyes and hair. Ooh, bad hair day. Graphics programs let you stretch, resize, or scale. and move graphic elements. The thought bubbles could be easily made with the circle tool, but we'll use the pen instead. This creates bezier curves. Notice that if you finish the shape at the starting point, it closes in. Moving the bezier handles 
allows you to change the direction and sharpness of each curve. The last object will be a rectangle. You'll see why in a minute. The program allows you to resize or scale the elements, move them, and rotate them until they are arranged the way you want them. Another use for Bezier curves is to create a curved text path. This allows the text to follow a curve instead of a straight line and makes the design more interesting. Again, you can use the handles to adjust the curve. Once the path is in place, select the text tool and simply type in the message. Once on the curve, you can move the entire text or slide it on the curve to get it in exactly the right place. You don't need to create all of your graphics from scratch. There are discs with clip art that contain royalty-free graphics, or you can go to the internet to find an image. Let's see what a Google search for light bulbs comes up with. About 87,500 images. Wow! We won't take time to look at all of them, but you can see that there is a good selection available. The ideal graphic for this design should have simple lines and use only a few colors. This one looks like it'll do the trick. To use it, click on it to go to the website and then save the image. Back in the graphic program, you can import the image into your document. The import feature brings in graphics created by other programs. Once there, you can scale it to fit your design. To make color separations, you need graphics created by the program you're using. So we'll use this light bulb as a pattern and trace around it. The easiest way is to convert the light bulb to a grayscale image and then lock it in place so you don't accidentally move it. Then you can select the tools and colors and create your own light bulb using the one from the internet as a pattern. This also allows you to change the colors and shapes to suit your design. Most graphics software has a sampler tool that allows you to apply a color from one part of the drawing to another. That way, you don't have to find the same Pantone color you used before. Next, remove the pattern from the design. Now you can move the light bulb to its final place.
You can also change the type style or font. While most systems have a large number of fonts installed, if there is something special that just isn't there, you can find thousands more on the internet. Fonts.com is a good place to start. Select the general type you're looking for, then narrow it down from there. You can select a specific font and look at it in more detail to see what it will look like. When you find the one you want, you can purchase it online and install it in your system. Once there, you can use this font just like any other. Now let's add a corporate logo using a combination of text and graphics. If a part of a design repeats, it is usually quickest to copy it, paste it, then move it into position. A useful tool is the alignment tool, which automatically lines up the graphic elements with a click of the mouse. Most graphic programs also have special effects for slanting. Depending on the program, this might be slant, skew, or in the case of Illustrator, shear. Finally, we'll move it in place to finish the design. You can also add color to the text, just like any other part of the design. Now let's start a new document. This will be a template. A template is a design that can be used as a standard part of different projects. This template will have the registration marks. These help the screen printer line up the different layers of color. The standard design is a circle with crosshairs. There is a special color called registration on the swatch menu. This prints the registration marks on each screen when the computer prints out the separations. Once finished, save this template for later use.